What's going on, family? This is an exciting day. This is the first official interview that we are doing here on today's Inspiration. We have a guest that you are going to love hearing from. He will leave you feeling inspired, motivated, and give you some real, tangible, day-to-day -day advice. That's going to happen right now. What's going on, guys? My name is Maurice F. Martin, and this is another episode of Today's Inspiration. I have with me today Terrence L. Purrier. Um, I think he's going to have so much to bring to your lives right now, especially in a time where, quite frankly, there's a lot of change going on. Um, we are in all in the midst of kind of, um, I guess, a, a pulse check, for lack of better words, right, Terrence? Um, and so yeah. I think that he's really going to be able to add some good insight. Um, so I was going to like read your bio, but it, it probably make you um, blush too much. Um, so author, coach, inspirational, motivational speaker, um, business owner, uh, minister. I mean, you do a little bit of everything. Published author. What is it that you don't do, Terrence? Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> he does not dunk a basketball. I know him from childhood. He is my cousin. He does not dunk a basketball. He is short. Not if it's above five feet, I don't. <laughs> so Terrence, how has, um, how has this COVID-19 been affecting you um, as, a, as a motivational speaker? I know that you do a lot of events. Um, you have a conference you were putting together. So how has all this stuff affected you as it has affected the rest of the country? You know, it's, it's strange. You know, it, it, I would say it's a two-part answer. It's affected me um, as a business owner. Mm -hmm. And it's also affected me as, um, as a person who just does what I do as far as my craft is concerned. Mm -hmm. So as a business owner, a lot of my events um, are on site. You know, we gather, we really thrive off of social interaction and connection with people. And that part has been halted because of the limitations that we've had um, because of social distancing guidelines. So that part has been on pause. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of funny because when I started my business, uh, it's, it's already 99% virtual. It's online. Mm. And so a lot of my business, I was able to convert to a virtual platform and took some adjusting mm -hmm. for my consumers because they're not used to connecting in that way. Sure. Um, some actually thrive in that environment. They actually would prefer it, like the ones that I coach and things like that, webinars. They actually prefer an online environment, but those who actually like to go to a, an event and um, the brick and mortar of going to a building, for them, it, it's been an adjustment. So I've had to actually um, readjust a few things put a couple of things on hold mm -hmm. and um, you know, just, just being flexible. But to be honest, that's always been how businesses has been run. You know, you have to be flexible mm -hmm. when things happen. Sure. Um, building, buildings flood, electrical problems happen, mm -hmm. Wi-Fi goes out. So we've mm -hmm. always had to kind of move around things that we can't control. It's a little different here um, only because we've had to shut things down in a greater way. But mm -hmm. to be honest, a lot of my business has moved online. Um, I have one big event that's coming up. That's the, the biggest impact is we had to postpone that event mm -hmm. to later in the year. Um, mm -hmm. But we're, we're still, we're still doing it. Um, mm -hmm. if need be, that's the may, Dream Machine have, Conference, right? This one is the, uh, the winner's circle. We actually winner's were able circle. to complete the Dream Machine late last year, okay. uh, which was a great event. Uh, the winner's circle is the one that's going to be on hold. We're going to move it to September 26th. Um, okay. Unless things change, we may have to, um, readjust as needed because we can't really predict the future so mm. right now we did move the date uh, but from a motivational speaker minister of the gospel um, honestly it's been business as usual mm. because you know the, the the personality behind what I do is very much connected to faith and very much connected to managing through the unexpected and life as it happens and so that part to be honest it's been business as usual still connecting with people mm -hmm. still um providing that support, providing that information, coaching, ministering, um, that hasn't stopped. We've just kind of changed seats. And um, so I haven't really felt a negative impact because mm -hmm. your faith kind of helps you to stay positive, you know, regardless of what the situation is, you know. Um, so that's kind of this, how we function in faith is we always try to stay optimistic. We, uh, we recognize that life isn't um, always a bed of roses, but we always have to flex and make adjustments to look at the brighter side and let our faith take control. So that part of the personality behind the business 
it's, it's been another day at the office. It's been business as usual. Mm. So talk to that a little bit more. Speak to that. Um, there are some people who, you know, they consider themselves, um, you know, strong in their faith. They have a good connection to God, but but being out of work, um, mon- money issues or different things that they're going through, some people have been shaken in a way that normally they're not. Um, what is the advice that you have for a person who maybe is kind of feeling a little unbalanced? Um, you know, we're seeing there's a spike in domestic violence, a spike in divorces. I mean, there's a lot of things that are being, I guess, for lack of better words, exposed now that so many people yeah. are stuck in the home. So what, what would you suggest that a person does about that? You know, from your faith background as a coach, I mean, you work with a lot of people and as a minister as well. Yeah, my biggest advice uh, to summarize it is don't look for an easy answer, you mm-hmm. know, because we want to, our, our ears are, are, we're born the same way we're born into sin. Mm-hmm. We're also born into ears that want simple answers. That's what we, our go-to is give me something simple, <laughs> yes. predict the future for me. Uh-huh. That's how our, our ears would like to work. And we mm-hmm. want to hear things that are soft on the ears. And we want to hear things that give us immediate gratification or just make us think that there will be no problems and everything will work out perfectly. Mm-hmm. Don't look for those type of answers because you will always be disappointed. Yes. Faith always requires action. Um, faith always requires us to bring something to the table concerning what we buy into or what we agree with. And so for those who are impacted by this, um, jobs are shaken. The economy, is, our, our personal economy is shaken. Not the economy we hear about on the news. Right. We're talking about our economy, right. the economy in our household. <laughs> because <laughs> right. the economy isn't always our economy. I, and I say that because there's been many times where people, I mean, the economy is booming and we're great. And I was broke, player. Right. You and me both. And then there Amen. were times, <laughs> and then there's times where there's like, like right now, for example, where the economy is being hit hard and there's unemployment and I've never been more financially sound. Right. And so, so our economy, how is our economy impacted and how does our faith connect to our economy? Mm. What are the promises in God's word as it relates to our personal economy? Because our economy mm. is not of this world. Mm. Our economy is based on principles in, in the Bible where it talks about how our giving will be rewarded and honored if we honor God at first. So that's the kingdom system of finances that I have always run my life through. And these times force us to rely on that system of faith. And Mm. so what I tell people who are going through hardship is to go back to the fundamentals of where does, where does your foundation, what is your economic foundation? Does it, is it, is it firmly standing on the word of God? Because if it's not, then absolutely you're freaking out right now because your system has failed you. But if you're resting on the promises of God, then now is the time where faith is going to work out those muscles. Will it be easy? Probably not most days. Some days it's going to take some effort because mm-hmm. it's like we have kids to feed, we have bills to pay, things are being shut down. How do we engage in that world? Well, what does our faith tell us to do? It tells us that God will provide all of our needs according to the... So, so we have to kind of rely on those things, stand on those things. And this is the opportunity to, uh, like, like what you talked about earlier, how do I grow in this space? Mm. You know, and my faith is being tested. Yeah. Pretty good segue right there. Um, so yeah. you, you published a book recently called Grow Through It. And it certainly yeah. seems like this is one of those times where, you know, if you are feeling that your, your life has been exposed, for lack of better words, um, some of your weaknesses, um, your lack of communication, uh, lack of good stewardship in terms of finances, whatever it might be, man, right now you really have to grow through this situation, kind of embrace the process that you're in. Um, So speak to that a little bit. What kind of things do you teach not only individuals, but also business owners when it comes to kind of growing through tough times or growing through lean times like what we're dealing with right now? It it, it starts with that personal question is, what am I supposed, and this is a big question. This is Mm -hmm. the question that I always ask God. This is the question that I challenge business owners to um, engage with their leadership is the question is, how am I supposed to engage with this space that I find myself in? Mm -hmm. And how do I grow from here? Mm -hmm. And once you ask yourself that question, it forces you to engage completely differently because Mm -hmm. if you go into it, acknowledging the circumstance and saying this sucks and this is not ideal, Mm -hmm. um, once you're done with the emotional tantrum that you're gonna throw in that space, you have to come up with some type of answers or some type of direction. And so when I ask myself, how am I supposed to grow right here? It's going to change how I engage because complaining is not a growth behavior. Um, Mm. Sitting here in fear is not a growth behavior. Those are things that kind of keep us just sitting there and digging the hole deeper and escalating anxiety. When I ask myself, how do I grow right here? Now I'm becoming Mm. solutions driven. I I start to ask the questions that lead to results. Um, I engage differently. So the first thing is shifting the mind to say, okay, how do I grow in this space? Because it's trauma. 
And to be, to be honest, we start our life with trauma. Here mm -hmm. you are comfortable in your mom's womb. You're being fed in a certain way. Mm -hmm. You're being developed in a certain way. And now birth is about to happen. Mm -hmm. On the outside of birth, everybody else is excited. You're going through trauma. And so what is trauma for you may not be trauma for everybody else. And so True. the best way to navigate through that trauma is to be sober minded. It's to be, it's, it's to really engage with the growth process. Otherwise that exit strategy is going to go completely different if you're panicking and if you're freaking out. So the first thing is be sober minded, mm -hmm. say, okay, how can I grow? Um, how, how can I engage with this situation in a way that's conducive for where I want to go? So the first thing we do is we pose a question. This is get our mindset in the place where we're ready to move forward and not stay, stay in the place of stuck. And then once we ask ourselves the question, what does growth look like? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and sometimes we have to settle for things that um, are not ideal, like to say, oh, well, you know, if it doesn't kill, kill you, make you stronger. I don't know if I buy into that exactly. I don't buy into that, I, no. But I do buy into the fact that all things work together for the good, yes. which means while I'm waiting for my breakthrough, I have to learn how to wait well. Or if I'm waiting for my business to turn around, I have to engage with my staff. I have to make sure that we're all on the same page. I have to do some things to get to a place of, of sobriety and thought. Mm. Otherwise, I'm going completely off of my emotions. I'm going completely off of anxiety. And I'm going to start sinking very, very quickly. Mm. The only difference between the person who sinks and the person who swims is how they move. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> how they engage same and it water. happens. So, so it, the thing is, if I find myself in a situation and I panic, now I'm mm. not to say you shouldn't panic. I'm not saying that panic is like a weird reaction. It's a natural mm -hmm. reaction to panic when, you're, when you feel yeah. like you're about to die. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I have to make sure that I get to a place where I become strategic in my movement. Because mm -hmm. if I become strategic in my movement, I may make it out of this thing or I may start to feel muscles I didn't know that I had. I'm trying to get to a better place. But if I just sit here and acknowledge the circumstance, I'm going to get to the end that I don't want probably quicker than I would want to. So mm -hmm. you have to really be careful of how you engage those faith muscles. And it's not an easy answer. You know, sometimes it's taking it minute by minute, hour by hour, but I'm being driven by where am I trying to get to? What does growth look like? Because failing right here is not an option for me. Mm -hmm. um, calling it quits right here is not an option for me. I have not accepted that as my conclusion. It means every decision that I make while I feel like I'm drowning is going to be conducive for where I'm trying to get to. This is where a lot of people lose it. This is where Absolutely. a lot of businesses go under. This is where relationships fall apart because we're not solutions driven. We're just stuck in our emotional place. And I don't judge that because life happens in a major way. Like you said, some people have mm -hmm. lost their jobs. Sure. Some people actually are sick. Mm -hmm. And some people know people who have died and they can't really even died, grieve yeah. in a traditional sense mm -hmm. because they can't even go get the closure of a funeral. So this, this is a very scary time for a lot of people. So mm -hmm. our situation is we have to say, okay, I'm not going to succumb to fear. I'm not going I'm, I'm to say fear isn't here because it's knocking at the door. I'm just not going to invite it in. Because the moment I invite it in, I start catering to it. I have to start serving it because now it's a house guest. Mm -hmm. But as long as it's knocking, I have to learn to ignore the fear and say, hey, what can I do intentionally to engage with faith? Mm -hmm. You know, so if you sit there and just ignore fear, you're not really ignoring it unless you, until you start to engage with faith. Because right. if, if fear is knocking on the door and you're sitting there on the couch with your arms full, I'm not letting fear in, <laughs> you're still engaging with it because you yes. haven't engaged with faith. So while you're not being afraid, how are you engaging with faith? How are you substituting that? Um, and how are you looking to do other things that will pull you in the direction that you need to be in? And that takes intention. It doesn't just fall in your lap and happen. It takes intention. Um, it takes me saying I'm going to actively, that, that's, that's how you grow through it. Mm -hmm. You grow through it by being intentional and not waiting for the breakthrough just to fall in your lap because unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Sure doesn't. I wish it did. I, I wish you could too. turn around three times. <laughs> I wish you could. I wish you could name it and click claim it. Click I, your I, heels, I, you know. <laughs> yeah, that'd be that'd be convenient. If I could name it and claim it, I would name it and claim it all day. Spin um, around in a circle, I, I, touch your touch your head a couple yeah. times, blink real fast. But after, but after you get done spinning around, you find yourself dizzy. Not now. What's the next step? Now I'm I have to be preach, intentional. Yes. <laughs> I have to be intentional because because all too often we 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 call that faith. Mm -hmm. that, I think that's where faith starts. Faith starts in a place of enthusiasm because we have a different perspective. So that's sure. where it starts, but that is not where it stops. That's not where it ends. It comes with a decision that we get excited about, but then it's followed by a course of action mm. that lead us to what the Bible has promised us we can have. And this works the same in business as it does in our personal life and ministry. It, it, faith is faith. God's word is God's word. It's not bound by the church and it's also not bound by a boardroom. It's just, it's just his word. Right. And so my behaviors my intentional behaviors, their decisions. I like to call decisions bricks. And, and 
every decision, as, as you begin to collect these good decisions, you're building a house of success. You're building a place of stability by decisions you make consistently. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not doing any action, I have no bricks. I have no building. I'm not building. Any, I'm not growing through. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just sitting in it, acknowledging it and saying, man, it's going to turn around. I'm going to spit around three times. But until you take the action to forgive, mm -hmm. until you take the action to trust God by what he said and not by what you see, until you do it consistently over the course of time, but you're just going to go through it, right? Mm -hmm. You're, you're going to find yourself moving in circles, but you're not developing in this. And so the, the number one word is being intentional, mm -hmm. which means I'm not just going to wake up. No, I'm going to be intentional, which means I'm going to set my clock and say, I have to pray at this time. Mm -hmm. I, I have to. I have to be intentional. I'm not going to say, well, maybe I'll pray today. Like it's a random thing. I have to be intentional because this is how I'm building myself while I'm going through this trauma, while I'm going well, it, through this, it does this storm. Seem it does seem like the number two word would be intentional because what number one was definitely engage, right? And yeah. um, anybody who was listening to, to what you just had to say, heard the word engage, different types of engagement, engagement within self, engagement with faith, engagement with, within your prioritization. And you know, that is one thing I find. Um, I work with a lot of people who are dealing with, with drama, trauma, bad situations, and people have a tendency to disengage. Whenever they get into hard times, um, you go and you hide in your bedroom and lock yourself in and stop talking and you drink and do whatever. And, and so it seems like choosing to engage is, this, is the first step and then figuring out what to be intentional about. Um, I really loved what yeah. you just said there. That example was so good about, about the brick by brick. And oftentimes what makes bricks stick together is is the knowledge that you get from the lessons and the choices that you make. Um, the the reality is sometimes even if you make a, a, a well-informed choice, it's not the right choice. <laughs> even if you prayed about yeah. it, you worked on it, but, but do you allow those things to still be building blocks because you learn from them and develop some wisdom? Um, so I guess the, the next question would be, and I'm loving this, if you guys are just tuning in, um, Terrence L. Perrier, uh, motivational speaker, author, business coach, consultant, so much. Um, so let's say a person um, has just kind of took an L. Um, <laughs> they have just started a business or just got going with something, and then all of a yeah. sudden COVID-19 hits, and now it's just like, man, what am I supposed to do now? What does a person do if they have just all of a sudden kind of had the, 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 the rug pulled out, of, out from under them? What, what, what would you suggest at a time like this for that? I think the best thing to do is acknowledge that that sucks. Mm. <laughs> don't be, don't be in a rush. Don't be in a rush because then you're, you're acting like it's like being on fire and saying, eh, I'm on fire, but it's no big deal. No, you got to do something. Mm. Let's acknowledge I mean, that pain is there for a reason to mm -hmm. indicate that action is necessary. And so it's okay for us to take a moment and say, man, that really sucks. Mm -hmm. But we can't stay in that moment. But it's okay for us to kind of feel the pain because that pain is going to give us direction. Like mm. you burn yourself, you, you move your hand really quickly. That, that, if, the pain, if you didn't feel the pain, you would sit there and you would just go to ashes. <laughs> like the yeah. pain is almost, <laughs> the, the reflex of it almost gives you an, an instinctual um, movement to say, I, ha I have to make a move here. So right. if you just got started and COVID-19 has hit you in a, in a major way, we're going to take a second to say, man, that sucks. But okay, let's move on from that. But it's okay to acknowledge because what we do is we try to over spiritualize or over you know mm. we get too excited and say oh man it's gonna be okay but look, give me a minute to mourn over mm. what i just lost because mm -hmm. some, something died i mean would you tell a person who just lost somebody okay but life's gonna be better tomorrow no let's let's grieve what was lost mm -hmm. because i tell you what there's something to be learned through our grieving process mm. and you, you mentioned we took an l and remember l always stands for learn not lose because as long as you you learn you didn't lose anything mm -hmm. so first we're going to grieve because in our grieving, we find out how durable we are. We find out how strong, we find out there's a strength within ourselves that we didn't know was there. We learn God in a different way when we grieve mm -hmm. because we knew God to be the God of the mountaintop and now I know him to be with me in suffering, to be a comforter. And so we learning God in that space builds character. So that's a good thing to know him in that mm -hmm. way. It sucks. But first thing, let's acknowledge, okay, this sucks. Mm -hmm. And then um, if you just got started, find, find the courage to say, what can I learn um, about like when I first got started with my, um, my business mm -hmm. and, um, I actually started my business during a recession, which is mm -hmm. funny. And, <laughs> and I learned about an online platform because I don't, I don't always have the brick and mortar 
to be able to have a bookstore. I had my book mm -hmm. in a store mm -hmm. and I had to sell books out of the trunk of my car. You know, so it's like I had to be flexible. Sure. I learned that when a business system failed me. Mm. And so because I learned the importance of being flexible when COVID-19 happened, it did not move my business mm -hmm. as far as my sales and my revenue, because I've already weathered a storm before. Mm -hmm. And so for those who just got started, what's the lesson that can be learned? How can I get online? Because mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, there's always a solution. Um, mm -hmm. what, am I, what am I being called to create in this space? Because after all this is over, um, you think your staff or your, your group of people are going to want to gravitate to the one who, who panicked and lost it all or the one who was the captain of the ship through the storm. You may be building clients right now that are ready to do business three months from now. So there's always something to be gained um, if you're willing to see it that way. Mm. And so don't, don't just succumb to it, but become very, very creative in this space. Mm. Become very creative because life will always happen. If it's not COVID-19, it's going to be something. There's always going to be something that happens. Don't buy into the hype of how it's infect, affecting everybody. Because the Bible says that it'll come close to the left to the right, but it won't come nigh me. It mm -hmm. talks about how God will preserve you through tragedy in ways that he won't preserve everybody. So that means there's a, there's a way to grow through this that everybody may not be privy to. It's your responsibility to discover what is that. Mm -hmm. what, because when everybody else was, getting, was freaking out about the dream because they saw financial a financial fall was getting ready to happen and Pharaoh's having these crazy dreams. Joseph, Joseph was the only one who could see the strategy mm -hmm. in the chaos and say, you know what, this is how we need to start to prepare. And because of his mindset being different, he was promoted in a time where really jobs weren't being offered, right? The only mm -hmm. reason why he was even promoted is because there was a problem. You'd be surprised how God can pr promote you through problems if mm -hmm. you just stay in the place of consistency and have your ears open to what's gonna, what do I do next? How do I engage at the next level? Yes, uh, so for those, who, for those who are struggling with that because it feels like loss, um, it's okay to feel that way. I mean, you, yeah. you, it's okay for you to feel that um, you're, the disappointment. It's okay for you to feel mm -hmm. um, devastated because you'd be surprised who you're going to help down the road when they had that same devastation, right. you're going to be able to counsel them and help them. So you have no idea what this is preparing you for mm -hmm. as long as you grow through it in the right way. Don't pretend like it's not happening, but you have to still grow through it. I often say to, to patients that it's kind of the difference between a sprinter's mentality and a marathon mindset, that if you yeah. are always just thinking you got to be the first to the finish line, sometimes you can miss out on the fact that sometimes this is really a marathon. And marathon runners, man, they got to go and train every day. They train in the rain. Uh, and, and then when you get to the, to the biggest race, when it matters, something inside of you still wants to quit halfway through. Uh, you know? And so it's, it's just important to understand this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. This is, this is the long haul right here. Yeah, but it's hard when you're born a runner, man. We, we get so excited. I know I'm very excited when, I, when I'm about to start a project. Yeah. or launch out in the area, but I get very excited because I see the potential right away. Mm -hmm. I see the finish line right away, right? And so I'm in, a, I'm in a hurry, like when the stimulus checks, I'm checking my account every day. When's it gonna drop? When's when it is it hit? coming? Because, because we're driven by a reward system. We wanna get to the prize. You yes. know? Um, even the Bible talks about don't run as someone who runs randomly, run as one who wants to get to the prize. And so there's nothing wrong with being ambitious and, be, ambitious and being goal-driven, but you have to remember that um, there's, no, there's no clock here. As long as I'm taking the right steps in the right moments, I'm mm -hmm. on track. So I know there's something in you that writes a goal. I want to have this done by this date, but God has a different thing in mind. Mm -hmm. And we have to be open to that when our timing fails, that we can still be right in the pocket of what he plans for us. Um, so it, it's, I get the excitement, but to your point, it's about a finisher's anointing. Can, can you get to the finish line? Can you get mm -hmm. to the end? Because if you rush through the grow through part that we try to avoid, mm -hmm. you're not going to build the muscle mentality to sustain you. Very Once true. you get to the place where you're supposed to be, if you rush through, if you rush through the storms mm -hmm. and you try to take shortcuts and not feel the grief of the loss and not, if you take shortcuts, your mm -hmm. character is going to show it when you get successful. I always like to say, you know, a person's integrity based on how they respond to failure and how they respond to success. To success. If you yeah. rush to the finish line and don't allow yourself to develop the muscles that are necessary, it could be muscles of compassion. It mm -hmm. could be muscles of patience. Mm -hmm. It could be muscles of endurance. Whatever God is trying to build in you, when you get the thing that the prize, when you get there, if you don't have the muscles and the character to keep you there, it'll be a short-lived victory, right? Yes, absolutely. And so as long as you finish, get, let everything that's supposed to happen between point A and point B, let it happen. Ride mm -hmm. it out. 
um, and just engage with it. Be intentional because once you get it, you want to get it and keep it and stay in that place and continue to grow and level up. But mm -hmm. if you try to rush through all the work, you're going to find yourself with everything you thought you wanted. And it's, I, there's, there's an expiration date on that success because it's, mm -hmm. there's no substance. There's no foundation. And the, the Bible says it this way. The moment a storm hits, mm -hmm. you're going to be that thing that falls right away because you never built that foundation mm -hmm. to help you to weather storms. Right? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of hollow victories there. Um, I, I, like to, I like to say, too, that, you know, when it comes to that sprinter's mentality, uh, one of the biggest problems is that I, I tend to look over at, my, at the people to my left and right at the starting yeah. line, I think they're all my competition. Yeah. When you watch people run Absolutely. in a marathon, they don't care when they finished in the race. It's that they finish that matters, yeah. and they consider themselves winners because they finished. <laughs> yeah, it's like we're 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 inspired by often the wrong things. And yes. here's the thing: uh, the grass is greener on the other side, but that water bill is higher. You know, sometimes we <laughs> we compare ourselves, but this is what happens: we prematurely launch into things because mm. we're watching what we perceive to be competition yes. you know and that that can that will always mess you up I, mm -hmm. I coach against that i mentor against that never set your pace by what your neighbor is doing because you mm. don't know what they're battling you don't know what's on their like you, you, you have to run your race you, you have to lock into what you're doing because if you gauge your success by somebody else's journey you're going to find it, it, you, you don't know the, the, the story to that extent. That's not a good measurement. Mm -hmm. You have to pay attention to who was I yesterday? Mm -hmm. Who was I a month ago? And am I better than them? Am mm -hmm. I stronger than them? But there as long go. as you look at your neighbor, man, you're going to find yourself always falling short because you're being driven by something that is very carnal. You're being mm -hmm. driven by something that lacks morality. You're being driven by something that has absolutely nothing to do with your journey. Now, you can be inspired by others. You can look at, you know, uh, Mark the Perfect Man, right? You, you can look at mm -hmm. somebody else and be inspired by them, but don't be arrogant to say you know their story and mm -hmm. you know their journey. Mm -hmm. Sit down and learn. What, this is what I tell people. They see my marriage. Oh, man, y'all have been married for 13 years. You got three beautiful girls. Man, I wish I could have it like you. And I'm like, you want my stuff? Because you have no <laughs> idea what I lost. Right. You, you, you really don't want my stuff because mm -hmm. you don't know who I had to bury. You don't know who I had to let hurt me. You, you have no idea what it mm -hmm. costs me mm -hmm. to have what you see today. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So yes. a picture is worth a thousand words, but it's worth 10,000 secrets. So mm -hmm. for everything you think you know, there's something that you don't see that, that I had to sacrifice to have this. That's why it's most important for you to ask the person about their story, not just their trophies. That's what you can glean to. But you, at the end of the day, you have to run your own race. You have mm -hmm. to do your own thing. Be inspired where you can be inspired. Um, you know, and, and the iron sharpens iron, but you have to do the work. Don't look for shortcuts, run your race and don't be distracted by the winds of somebody else, especially when it's vanity, when you're just seeing somebody else doing something you think of success. Don't ever do that because what you, what you don't know is that their credit score is in the 300s. What you don't know is they are, they're boasting in success that is not real. Mm -hmm. You have to really be focused. You have to really see your own goals, do your thing. Be inspired by others, but never allow jealousy to sneak in or envy to sneak in because that will never end good. And it'll always have your motive being wrong and you'll always be leading towards failure um, if you allow those things to drive your perspective. Mm. So Terrence, you just talked a little bit about inspiration. So let's say someone has been completely inspired by you. Um, I know that on your website, it says that you offer one free coaching session. Is that something you're still doing? Absolutely, because what we do, um, we do a free consultation to connect it, because you write the vision, make it plain. So when you're doing the business goal, um, when you're writing the business strategy, whatever you're doing, or if it's for your personal life, you want to write a vision out for um, what is it that we're trying to accomplish here? What's the vision? Because mm -hmm. if there's no vision, if there is no guiding vision, then, then we can't really work together yet because I can't be the one to dictate to you. You should come to the table with at least an idea of what you want to do, even if you can't put it all the way into words, mm -hmm. you have something that says, this is where my passion is, you know, I feel connected to this, it stimulates my creativity. So we kind of just say, okay, what are you trying to accomplish? What are we trying to do? What type of timeline are we looking at getting started? What budget are you working with? And we just kind of just prepare the vision and we connect to see, hey, is what I offer a good fit for you? Mm -hmm. You know, and because there's a lot of people, I'm like, you know what? I think what you're doing is great, but I have somebody else that I think you should connect with. I think they're more aligned, you know, and I have no problem with that. But if they say, that, hey, this is a good fit, this is a good partnership, this is what working together will look like, or if it's just saying, hey, this is just something to get you started, and then you go and you run with it. So the first consultation is just about assessing what you're trying to get out of a coaching um, relationship, 
and how far you're trying to take this thing and what I can offer you to support the vision that you have. And that free consultation um, is it's definitely something that I offer to everybody. And then from there, um, I'll either give you uh, some direction. Here's what you should go engage with. This is what you should go do to get started. Mm-hmm. Or we can connect and have some programs that actually are three months out, six months out a year, however long you want to work. And uh, we basically create a program that's tailored to you. And then from there, we coach you to get your business going or to promote on a job or to launch on whatever your, your goal is. We engage and provide tools and strategies to help get you there. And I also saw that you also are actually helping people looking to get into self-publishing, correct? Correct. So, so I know a lot uh, of what, kind of, know, yeah, what kind of work do you do? Yeah. So like, well, how do you get started when you're writing? Because a lot of people have a blank canvas and it's like, okay, I know I have something I want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I can put it in a book uh, or an ebook or um, a memo. Or you, you want to basically put your thoughts and your life and your experience out on paper for other people to, to read. Um, you want to be an author. And so my self-publishing coaching program tells you how to do that. I have two books that I've published, self-published. Um, I'll tell you basically how to get your manuscript um, printed, how to get it. The, 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 the touch and the feel of it, you know, um, mm-hmm. with a designer or if you want to do it yourself. And then from there, how do I get it printed or how do I get it put online as an ebook? How do I get it distributed? How do I get it on Amazon? How do I get it in stores? And so my program is basically a root to fruit type of program from mm-hmm. when you first write your pen on paper or type on your keyboard to the fact that the book is in somebody's hand. That, that whole process, I coach people on how to do that. Or if they do say, hey, you know what? Here's my manuscript. Do it for me. Um, I offer those services as well to produce that book for you and um, get it ready for, um, for distribution. And they would get all that information at terrenceperrier.com? Yeah, so when you go to terrenceperrier.com, um, or you can do terrenceperrier.com forward slash services, it'll take you straight there. But mm-hmm. if not, you'll find yourself on the homepage. You just click in where it says um, services, you go to where it says book publishing or coaching, whatever thing you're looking for, and it'll tell you how you can connect with me. Um, I'll get an email right away. I do my own email, so you're talking to me. Um, I'll connect with you, we'll get a consultation going to see what you're trying to accomplish, and then from there, Uh, We work together to see what we can accomplish. All right. Well, Terrence, uh, I really appreciate you jumping on today. Um, I know you got three beautiful little girls to get back to and a wife. Um, So I'm not going to keep you much longer. Um, So I guess uh, any last words that you have for the audience today? And then also, how else can people find you online? Yeah, man. And definitely, I I appreciate just the connection and the opportunity just to share um, my voice, especially in all that's going on. Um, the book that I have that's grow through it, it is on my website. Um, we talked a lot about it today. Book. So if you go to terrenceprayer.com, you can go grab the book. <laughs> um, it'll also be available in ebook pretty soon, but right now you can definitely get a personal copy, signed copy shipped out to you personally. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, I guess the last thing I would just tell people is just know that we're gonna get through this together. We've been hearing that a lot. And um, it's very true that we will get through it. And I like the fact that they say we'll get through it together. Right, it's all about connection. Even though we're not able to connect in the traditional sense, um, we are. Connection is everything. Um, we thrive off of being connected with one another. Find yourself in a situation where you're connected to the right people, um, the right things. Don't stay loyal to things that are toxic and that hurt you, that damage you. Um, connection is too important for you just to give it to anybody so and good. anything. So good. just because you can connect with it doesn't mean it's going to give you life. Um, mm-hmm. You you have to make sure you are connected in the right way with the right people to make sure that you are growing and producing things in your life that you need to. And we all have felt the burden of connecting to the wrong things, connecting to the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for a certain period of time, you may be a victim of that circumstance, but after a while, you're no longer a victim. You become a volunteer. Mm Because that means I have the power to change and I'm choosing not to. So if you know that you need to reconnect to the right things, that would be in this time, it is so important to be connected to the right things that will produce the the fruit in your life that you want to see. For those who want to follow me and connect with me, you can go. Everything is at Terrence Perrier. Um, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, everything is at Terrence Perrier. I have content there, live videos, all those things that we do. We, we have a lot of fun in our live videos. Um, again, personal personal coaching, um, go to TerrencePerrier.com. And um, if you want to email me, it's info as an in information, info at TerrencePerrier.com. And um, I'm looking forward to connecting to you. Hopefully you found some value in this dialogue. And um, I'm just definitely praying for all those who are impacted by what's happening right now. Like I said, we're going to get through it together. Well, I, I have no doubt that people will take a lot from this. Um, I hope that you get yourself some new clients, uh, also some new people just reading your book. And, and that wasn't the only great book that you've written. The first one um, had a great impact on me as well, Does Your Network. So um, Appreciate it. Let's, let's make sure that, that you guys, uh, I'll make sure that I put links down below this video um, to the books his uh, social media and all that good stuff. So uh, with that, I will let you go. Um, Terrence L. Purrier, 
I don't think I said this earlier. He's also my cousin, um, my less good looking yeah. uh, cousin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you wish. Uh, yes, you're right. I do wish. Um, but yes, thank you so much <laughs> for jumping on today, for just giving us uh, so much of your spirit, so much wisdom. We appreciate you. We're going to be rooting for you in the next stages. And I'm just looking forward to see what you do next. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate you, man. Absolutely. All right, guys, that is it for today. Uh, next Monday, we will have another guest. This is going to be my new Monday tradition, is bringing on new people to inspire you, motivate you, and just give you fresh revelation and wisdom in your life. My name is Maurice F. Martin, and this has been another episode of Today's Inspiration.